Hello, it's Meg Ray, and welcome to the second part of my World Edit Guide series. In this video, I'll be covering the basic clipboard commands such as cut, copy, and paste, flip, and rotate, as well as others along the way. The bulk of this video is just explaining how each command works to the best of my ability, but at the end of the video, I will do a little more application for how you can think about using some of these commands to finish a build. Anyway, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Before we do anything, we're gonna have to have a selection of some kind. So I'm going to go ahead and select this flower I have here. Now, whenever we cut or copy anything, it's always going to cut or copy to our clipboard in relation to where we're standing. So if I were to stand whatever distance away from it or from whatever location, it will paste in that exact same location from where we copied it. Better demonstrate. So if I'm standing one block away from it and I were to cut it from here, now if I'm going to paste it in, it's going to paste directly in front of me like it was where I cut it. So if I paste, it will paste in the exact same place directly in front of me. Let's go ahead and undo that a couple times. Now if I were to cut it up here, it will paste the same distance in the same location for wherever I'm standing. So if I stood on the ground and pasted it, it's going to paste in the ground because we were standing above it when we cut it. So that's cutting. It's just if you wanted to cut something and relocate it mostly. But now I'm going to show you how to copy, which is done the exact same way, except we're just making a copy instead of actually cutting it. So let's go ahead and copy this. And you can see it's left our original one there because it's just made a copy to our clipboard. And I'm standing just a few blocks away, but let me go ahead and fly out somewhere and just paste it in. And it will paste the same distance from us from where we copied it. So that's pretty self-explanatory. It works the same way as cutting. Wherever you copy it from is where it's going to paste. So it did paste directly in front of us since that's how we copied it. Now I'm going to show you a few flags we can use when pasting that can really help with your workflow. Suppose we have our flower here and we wanted to move our selection with it when we pasted it in. That's something we can do using flags. Now we already have this copied to our clipboard so I don't need to copy it again but I'm going to paste it this time using the flag minus S for selection. It will actually paste our selection along with our flower. So let me go ahead and do that. And you can see it's actually moved our selection. I actually did that a little too perfectly and landed directly on top of the other flower, but I wanted to show you what would happen if we pasted it a little bit lower where it intersected with the other flower. I'm gonna do minus S again so we can see our selection moving. And you can see that it's actually pasted over my other flower. This is because it's also pasting in all of those air blocks. So if you wanted to paste something without the air blocks interfering like that, then all you'd have to do is use the flag minus A. So let me undo this and we're going to paste it in again, this time using the flag minus A. And it's ignoring all of those air blocks and just pasting in everything else. And it's kind of merging with my other flowers you'll probably be using that quite often as it's very, very helpful. It's just one of those commands you can't live without. What if we wanted to paste something in without air blocks and moving our selection? Well, we can do that. We just need to combine those two flags. So I can do minus A, S, and as you can see, it's pasted it in with our selection and without the air blocks. Now, one more flag for pasting. I'm going to undo all of this so we have a clear palette to work from. If you were to cut or copy anything, and you wanna put it back in the original location, but you don't remember where you were standing. So you can try to paste it in and you just don't remember. Of course, we could just undo it to put it back here, or we could just do the command paste minus O and that will put it in its original location. I can see this becoming most useful if you wanted to rotate something and paste it in the same place over and over, but let's not get into that right now. Also, I wanted to mention, yes, you can combine all three of these flags if you ever had need to, I don't know when you'd ever have a need for it, but it's pretty cool that you can. The next two commands I'm gonna show you aren't necessarily using your clipboard, but they are super useful whenever you need to duplicate something quickly or even just move something around. And I'm going to go ahead and make this selection here. And I already said what the first one was. So if we wanted to move this, instead of cutting it and pasting it somewhere, we could just use the command move. And what this will do is just move everything in that selection. So I'm going to do move and then the number of blocks I want to move it and then the direction. You can also just look in the direction you want to move it instead. And if we enter that, you can see it's moved everything in our selection down. Now this did move everything, including the air blocks. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that and redo it, this time using the minus A flag so it will ignore those air blocks. Actually, I technically could have moved my selection with this because now I have to reselect this, but I don't want you to think that those flags are only used when pasting. You can use them for other things too. 
But yes, I do use Move a lot, especially when I'm creating a really complicated organic and I need to adjust a limb or something. I use the Move command all the time for all kinds of different things. The next command I'm going to show you is Stack. It's kind of similar to if you wanted to copy something and paste it over and over. This is like a faster way of doing that. Let's say I have this circle thing selected and I wanted it to be the same shape, but I want to stack it a few times so it makes a full cylinder or whatever shape this is. So I'm going to stack it however many blocks and then the direction I want to stack it. And you can see it has stacked whatever was in our selection in that direction. This command is really useful if you're building anything like walls or anything that requires a lot of repetition. Now you do need to be mindful of the air blocks when you're stacking. If I had air blocks right above the shape and then stacked it up, it will paste in those air blocks as well. It really just depends on what direction you're stacking, so just be mindful of those air blocks. Now let's say you wanted to make a copy of this, but instead of copying and pasting, we could just use stack. So I have this selected and I just want to duplicate it one time. I'm going to just do stack and I'm not going to enter any numbers or anything and it will stack at one time in the direction I'm looking. Of course you'd want to make sure you have plenty of air blocks around so they don't interfere with each other. So yes, that is just like a shortcut for duplicating something real quick. The next basic clipboard command is to flip. Another word for it would be to reverse what's in your clipboard or to mirror it. So I have half of a little face here and I need to duplicate this and get the other half completed. So I'm going to have to make a reversed copy or I'm going to have to flip it. So with my half of the face selected, I'm very careful not to include extra air blocks because I don't want them to interfere. And I'm going to stand in the center because when we copy and paste, I want to make sure it's flipping from this spot. And we're going to copy it to our clipboard. You can't flip something unless you copied it first. And then we're going to look in whatever direction we want to reverse it. So I'm going to just look in this direction because I want it to be flipped along this axis. You could also type the direction north, south, east, or west, up or down if you wanted to do it that way. But now it's flipped in our clipboard and we still have to paste it. And I don't want to move anywhere because I want it to paste in the same place I copied it from. And just like that, we have a completed face. I don't necessarily have to be standing on top of this, but you do need to stand in the center if you wanted to flip something like this. As an example, you can see exactly where my selection is. If I were to copy it down here, I am in the center here, and if I were to flip it, in this direction. And now if I were to paste it one block over, you can see it's actually pasted it. So now we have two middles and that's not what we want. But you can see here how it's mirrored the whole selection and before I was just pasting the center on top of itself. So let me undo that. And this time I'm going to copy and flip it again. I don't necessarily have to, but I feel like doing it. Just to show you, you can do this from any point in the center. Just make sure you're not moving from that spot. Otherwise it will get messed up. Now we have our happy little face back, even though he isn't smiling, I know he's happy. But I think he would be even happier if he had someone to talk to. So I'm going to select the whole face again, and we're going to make another copy, and looking in the same direction, I'm going to flip it and paste it in. And doing that, it should have flipped it, so now it should be pasted in right behind us. And yep, there it is. Now he has someone to talk to. And you can see they're the same distance from that block I was standing on because it was just a mirror of my selection. Now you can flip it in any direction you want. I've just shown you a couple, but you would use this command if you're doing anything with symmetry. So I use it a lot on faces, but it would also work for buildings if you wanted to flip something and paste a mirrored copy of it. The more you use it, the easier it will get. And last but not least is the rotate command, which again is pretty self-explanatory, but it might be confusing if you're a beginner with world edit. So of course we have to make a selection because we can't use our clipboard unless we copy something first. So I'm going to make my selection and since I'm doing a circle, I'm going to want to find the center of that circle. Now you can rotate standing anywhere, but since I'm doing a circle, I want to make sure I'm copying and pasting it in the right place. Now, as you can see, both of my walls don't line up with the center, but it would still work if I rotated it because this gap is actually being occupied by that wall once we rotate it. But if it makes you happier, we can just go ahead and fill that wall in so we have them both lined up. That just means we're pasting one wall over the other. It doesn't make much difference. To do a basic rotation, first of all, we're going to copy it to our clipboard because we cannot rotate unless it's there. Now, whenever you rotate, you rotate in degrees, so we're going to rotate this 90 degrees which will be rotating it clockwise, which is the direction you can see for the red arrow. So it's going to be rotating it 90 degrees to the right. Now, if we wanted it to rotate to the left counterclockwise, we would just have to put a little minus sign in front of that and it would rotate the opposite way. 
but for this one we're going to rotate it 90 degrees to the right and let's go ahead and paste it in and it has pasted in 90 degrees right over here. I don't want to move from the center as I continue to rotate this around. Now remember, this rotation that we just pasted in is still copied to our clipboard, but this time I want to take that and rotate it 180 degrees to the left. And when I do that, it should paste right here in this quadrant. So what we did there was we rotated it 90 degrees twice. We rotate it 90 to here and then 90 to here, which is 180. So let me go ahead and paste it in, and yep, it rotated right to here. We need to rotate this one more time, minus 90 degrees to the left, and that should paste in this final corner to fill in our circle. I did that a little bit out of order just to show you that whenever you rotate something, it will stay at that rotation in your clipboard. So just remember that whatever's in your clipboard will always retain its rotation until you copy another selection. So that was just really quick basics for how to rotate. I think I will do a more advanced tutorial later on, but this is just covering the basics of 90 degree rotation. Now I will say this, it doesn't just have to be 90 degree angles that you rotate it on. You can rotate on any number angle, really. Just keep in mind that if you do do that, you might get some missing blocks because this is Minecraft and it doesn't translate other angles particularly well. So you can rotate on any angle, just be aware that non 90 degree angles will more than likely deform your object or cause blocks to just go missing. Now it's one thing to know a command, it's another thing entirely to actually apply it to what you're building. I have a couple of unfinished builds here and I'm going to show you how we can really quickly finish these builds off just by using some of the commands from this video. So the first one we have is going to be this little structure. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be, maybe it's going to be some kind of pavilion. Whatever it is, it will be much faster to finish it by just using a few commands. Looking at this structure, the first thing I'm going to have to do is finish off this roof, and the fastest way for me to do that will be to select this row of stairs, and then we'll just need to stack it to the edge of the wall. I think I need to stack it seven times over to get that right, so let me just go ahead and do stack seven, and that should stack that seven times. Yep, that was perfect. So now that we have this half of the structure done, I'm going to select all of this, and we're going to have to duplicate this and paste it on the other side. And the best way to do that would be to flip it, because we do need to have a mirrored image of it. Now we do have two center blocks, so there isn't going to be a center, there's actually going to be two centers. So I'm going to make sure I stand on this side as I copy it, and then I'm going to look in the direction we need to flip it, we need to flip it this way, and then I'm going to step one block over so that it pastes in the right spot. Since we're not going to have an exact center, we're actually going to have two centers. So let me go ahead and paste it right here. I'm going to paste it with my selection just so you can see that yes, it has pasted incorrectly. And now we have the two stairs in the center like I wanted. Now we just finished half of our little structure. I'm going to select this whole thing and we're going to copy and flip it again. This time we're going to copy it from the center. And again, we're going to be standing right on the outside and copy it. And this is the direction we want to flip it to. So let's do that. Now since we were standing one block out, I'm going to have to step one block over to paste this in. And when I do that, you can see we now have our complete structure. With just those few commands, we were able to finish this little structure really easily. Now just as another example here, what if I wanted to make my pavilion a little bit taller? There are a couple ways I could go about doing this. One of them would be to select the top half and use the command move and move it up a couple times. But doing that would leave air blocks in between each pillar that I would actually have to go in and place the blocks. Instead, what I'm going to do is just select the roof and we're going to copy and paste it just a little bit higher. In order for this to work, I'm going to have to make sure my selection is in the right location. So I have to make sure I have my pillars selected but not my bricks since I don't want to copy those. I just want to extend my pillars. So I'm making sure my selection includes the pillars. And what I'm going to do is just make a copy of this from the ground. And now I'm going to build up a couple of blocks. I'm going to paste it in from here, and when I do that, it should paste over those blocks that are currently there. Now when I do this, you can see that it's made it two blocks higher since I stacked myself two blocks up. And I did it in a way to where it was pasting over those stair blocks that were there before, so our pillars are still straight all the way up. Hopefully that made sense to you, but it was just a really fast way for me to make this just a little bit taller, just by using copy and paste. All right, for my final trick, I'm gonna show you how we can flip something that's on an angle and make it symmetrical. So I have half of this little bird here, and I only built half of it, so I hope it looks okay when we get the other half placed. 
but here's half of it. I just need to be able to flip it on an angle. Now, how do we do this? Well, it's just the same as flipping normally, except we'd have one extra step. So the first thing obviously is we're gonna to have to select the entire bird, and then we're gonna to have to find wherever the center point is that we wanna flip around, which in this case will be this edge right here. So standing in one spot, I'm gonna copy it. Then we're gonna flip it in a single direction. I'm just gonna flip it in this direction. And let me go ahead and paste that in just so you can kind of see where it's at right now. This is how it looks when we flipped it once, but it's not in the right spot. We need it over here. So after we flip it, what we're going to do, let's undo that, is we're just going to rotate it 90 degrees. And when we paste that in, it should paste across from our original half, making it a complete bird. This bird actually turned out really good. I actually really like how it looks considering I didn't really practice building the full bird before. But yes, that is how you'd copy and flip something on an angle. So you just have to add that extra rotation step in addition to flipping it. It's such a handy trick when working with symmetry on angles. Well, I hope that tutorial was beneficial to you and I hope you were at least able to learn something from it. All the commands I mentioned in this video are also in the description as well as some links to some of the world edit documentation. If you ever need to brush up on how to use a command, that's also a great resource to just go through that and read it and maybe even learn some new commands along the way. But that's all I have for this tutorial. If you do have questions, feel free to comment them below. Bye and happy building!